If you've watched our videos in the past, you're probably familiar with Medicare Supplement Plan G. It's our client's favorite plan, and even before Plan F was being phased out, it was often our number one recommendation. But did you know that Plan G actually also has a high deductible version? So today we're going to talk about why you might want to choose the high deductible Plan G, or why you might not want to. Now, as always, if you have any questions whatsoever about your health insurance, you can reach us in the comments or at the number on the screen. We are licensed nationwide and there's of course no charge for our services. The only thing that we do ask is that you please click that subscribe button to stay up to date because we do release these videos on a weekly basis. And of course, make sure to give us a thumbs up, click that like button so we can get this information out there. So what are Medicare supplement plans? Well, Medicare supplement plans will supplement your original Medicare coverage. They work in conjunction with original Medicare. Sometimes they're referred to as Medigap plans as well. And you would think of them as the all-inclusive approach to healthcare. Basically, you will pay an additional monthly premium, but you'll largely have your co-pays, co-insurance, or deductibles taken care of. Now, Medicare supplement plans do not offer additional benefits that aren't already offered by original Medicare. For example, things like dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drugs are not covered by Medicare supplement plans. There are, however, low-cost options available if these benefits are important to you. Now, although we are focusing today on Medicare Supplement Plan G, specifically the high deductible version, there are of course 10 plans to choose from. And the benefits offered by these plans are standardized from carrier to carrier. So the benefits aren't going to change from carrier to carrier. And these plans are entirely portable. So if your doctor or hospital accepts original Medicare, they accept your supplement plan, regardless of who your carrier is. So if you move, you don't need to change plans. And of course, remember that almost all doctors and hospitals accept original Medicare. So let's take a look at those 10 plans with a focus on Plan G. So on Medicare.gov, there's actually a page dedicated to comparing Medigap plans. So if you just scroll down, you will see all of the different plans available. That's Plan A, Plan B, C, D, F, G, K, L, M, and N. Now in other videos, of course, we do compare and contrast the different plans, but today we're really just talking about Plan G, specifically the high deductible version of Plan G. So if you scroll down in the Plan G column, you'll see which benefits are covered and which benefits aren't. And this asterisk here denotes that the high deductible version is available. So Plan G does cover your Part A coinsurance and hospital costs up to an additional 365 days after Medicare benefits are used up. Plan G, both the high deductible version and regular version, will cover your Part B coinsurance or co-pays, that is of course after the deductible is met. It will cover the blood, your first three pints. It will cover Part A hospice care coinsurance or co-pays. It will cover the skilled nursing facility care coinsurance your Part A deductible, not your Part B deductible, which we're going to get back to because that's a very important component. It covers Part B excess charges if you have them. Now Part B excess charges, if you are not familiar, basically if your doctor or hospital accepts Original Medicare, then they're willing to accept the amount that Original Medicare will pay out. However, some doctors do choose to charge up to 15% more, and that is what's known as a Part B excess charge. And if your doctor does charge the Part B excess charge and your supplement plan does not cover it, then you would be responsible for that Part B excess charge. Now, in all honesty, they're not very common and they're not even allowed in all states, but if that is something that's important to you, then the Plan G is the way to go. It also covers 80% of foreign travel exchange and the out-of-pocket limit isn't really applicable because it's basically covering all of your additional costs. Now, down here, you'll see where that asterisk is. Plans F and G also offer high deductible plans in some states. With this option, you must pay for Medicare covered costs, coinsurance, co-pays, and deductibles, up to the deductible amount of $2,700 in 2023 before your policy pays anything. Now the regular Plan G, 
you are still responsible for the Part B deductible, but it is $226. So that is a significant difference. Now, other than that, of course, the benefits are exactly the same. It's just that with the original Plan G, you only have to meet $226 out of pocket before your plan will begin to contribute to the coinsurance, the copays, blood if you need it for a transfusion, hospice care, skilled nursing facility care, and so on and so forth. With the high deductible version, you would first have to meet $2,700 out of pocket before your plan would begin to contribute. So really the main difference between Plan G and the high deductible version is how that cost breaks down. So let's take a look at Medicare.gov to see if it's really worth it. Once again, we're on Medicare.gov. This is the main page. If you scroll down to where it says Find Health and Drug Plans and click Find Plans Now, you'll be able to compare different plans. So we're going to first put in a Florida zip code and just click Medigap Policy. It's going to again ask you to put in your zip code. So here you're going to get a basic snapshot of all the different plans available as well as the general cost ranges. Now you can see here it's going to ask you to put in information for more accurate pricing. If you don't do that, you can see that the price range is pretty broad from $166 to $1,875. So I would recommend that you put in some type of information here that way you can get a better idea. So we're going to put in some information so that way we can update the prices. Now you'll see it's given us a much narrower price range from $166 to $331, at least for plan A. Now let's scroll down to plan G, both the high deductible and regular version. So here we are. On average, we're talking about $228 to $359 for regular plan G, that's your monthly premium, versus $56 to $100 for the high deductible version. Now let's also take a look and see what happens if we were to put in the same information in New York. I just want something for comparison. So I've actually already gone ahead and put in a New York zip code. We're going to put in the same information here, update the prices, and let's scroll down to plan G. So here we're talking about $282 to 705 for the regular version of plan G and 68 to $100 for the high deductible version of plan G. So now we're going to do some math, everyone's favorite, I know. Okay, so we're going to do this for each range. So we're gonna start with the lowest end for the regular plan G, and that's $228. So $228 per month times the number of months in a year, 12, and that gives us our yearly costs for premiums. And now, of course, we have to add the deductible for regular plan G, that's $226. So that brings us to a total yearly cost of 2,962. Now let's compare that with the lowest end of the Medigap Plan G high deductible. That's $56. Okay, so 56 times 12 plus that high deductible, which was $2,700. So that brings you to $3,372. So in this case, it looks like the high deductible version would be more expensive if we're comparing plan to plan the lowest version of each. Now let's go to the other end of the spectrum and talk about the higher range. So the higher range for the regular plan G was $359. So again, 359 times the number of months in a year plus your once annual deductible and that brings you to $4,534. And at the higher end of the spectrum for the high deductible version was $100. Let's take a look at that. So that would be 100 times 12, 1200 plus that $2,700 deductible, which brings you to $3,900. So you can see here that it's really hard to make that decision, isn't it? Because if you get one of the less expensive because if you get one of the less expensive regular plan G's, then it looks like you're going to save some money. However, if you get one of the more expensive regular plan G's, when you compare that to the high deductible version, then it looks like the high deductible version would actually save you a little money. 
And that's just in Florida. Now let's look at our other example comparing in New York. Okay, so in New York, the range is from $282 to $705 for regular plan G and $68 to $100 for the high deductible version. Again, let's start with the lower end of the spectrum, $282. So $282 times 12 equals plus 226. Okay, so we're talking about $3,610. And then we're comparing that to the high deductible version, $68. So it looks like you will save a little bit of money with the high deductible version this time, but they are extremely close. Let's compare it to the higher end of the spectrum, 705 versus 100. I think you know where this is going to go. 705 times 12. Whoa, that's pretty darn expensive. I don't think we're going to come anywhere near close to that with our high deductible version. 100 times 12 plus our deductible. Yeah, so you can see again that for the lower priced plans, it looks like the regular Medigap Plan G might save you money or it might be a wash. But if you end up on the higher end of the spectrum, it looks like the high deductible plan might save you a little bit of money. And this is only in two states that we're comparing. There are other states, of course, to compare, and it all comes down to where you live. And not only that, it comes down to the information that you would put up here because, of course, that's going to affect your pricing as well. So as you can see, it's really too close to call. You may be able to save money with the Medicare Supplement Plan G, the high deductible version, or possibly not. So we recommend that you work with a broker to determine which plan is better suited for your needs. And do remember that, of course, you can enroll in a Medigap plan year round, but you are best served doing so when you first become eligible in that six month window after you turn 65 and enroll in Medicare Part B. During this time, you will not be subject to medical underwriting. Should you choose to enroll after this time, then you may be subject to medical underwriting, which means you could be charged more or even denied outright. Now, as always, if you have any questions whatsoever about your Medicare or health insurance in general, you can reach us in the comments below or you can give us a call at the number on the screen. Now, we are licensed nationwide and there's absolutely no charge for our services. So if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to reach out and we will be more than happy to help. But before you go, just make sure to subscribe to stay up to date and of course, click that like button so we can get this information out there. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.